Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We, we honor your name, we glorify your name, we thank you for the life that you gave in your Son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that this message is filled with the hope and also the revelation and the wisdom and understanding that will allow them to walk closely with you. Lord, we just ask also that uh, through this uh, journey, which is including healing, we ask that you do what we can't do and just bring us into that, that promised land that you, that you promised us all the way back right in the beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that it's uh, given that command that we may be able to fear the Lord our God, to keep his statutes and his commandments, which I commanded you. And that you and your sons and your grandson and all the days of your life, that you, that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord your God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Appreciating that this uh, land that was promised to them, the one flowing with milk and honey, Perhaps maybe an idiom uh, denoting the, the, the land's beauty and, and opportunities that uh, lay before them. But I, I want to just touch on a word wealth. One as one. Strong's Accordance 259. One, a unit, united unity. Echad comes from the root achad, to bring together, to unify, to collect one's thoughts. And echad serves to portray the same range of meaning as one does in English. From the very narrowest sense to the broadest sense. Deuteronomy chapter four, sorry, Deuteronomy chapter six verses four to six is the most important text in the Old Testament, and Jesus called it the greatest commandment of Scripture, and it remains the central confession of Judaism to this day. The foundational truth for world, uh, for world redemption is that there is one God who creates and redeems. And yet, in the New Testament, shows that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Compare the unity of God to the unity of man made in his image. Man is compromised of spirit, soul, and body. Man is not the three things or beings, but one being, with physical, emotional, and spiritual elements. So the physical is our body, our emotion is our mind, and our spirit is our body, is, 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 is what's going home to be with the Lord mind, body, and spirit. And this is where the healing opportunity comes in. Because when we bring it in one as one, we can appreciate that we ourselves are being transformed into his image, but we're doing so with the love and the care of the brothers and sisters in Christ. And those that, 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 that are shepherding the flock. Where does this all come from? And where are we journeying? Where have we journeyed from? And where are we going to through this teachings of the greatest commandment? If we turn our attention back to Exodus chapter 3, which will give us an opportunity to see how the, the Lord spoke to Moses, leading them into uh, or on the pre precipice of the promised land, all the way from Egypt, that great call. What happened at that great call? Moses was at the burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, I am here. There's a kingdom dynamic that we can appreciate and uh, also take hold of uh, at this location of Mount Horebus. Perhaps maybe uncertain, but the tradition identifies that it was the, the Mount of Moses, perhaps being Gebel Musa, 7,500 uh, foot mountain in the center of the granite range of the south of the Sinai, Sinai Peninsula. But a kingdom dynamic speaking of angels of the Lord receiving worship not something that usually happens because it's God who gets the worship alone. One unusual angel, the angel of the Lord, is different from all the others that this angel received worship. How could this be? 
No angel can receive worship which belongs to God alone. The angel Lucifer was expelled from heaven for trying to receive such worship. The mystical or the mystery is solved in this text where the angel of the Lord is revealed to the Lord God, to be the Lord God himself. But how could Moses and other Old Testament persons have seen God face to face and lived since scripture clearly states the, the contrary? The answer? Because they saw the Son of God in a pre-incarnate form, known in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord, the messenger, the angel of the covenant. As we found in Daniel chapter 10 verses 13. But the point here is that angels are supernatural uh, creatures that exist in the heavenly places and serving as messengers of God, bringing about a, um, a, a protection for his chosen people that allows them to be able to go deeper and also be, be able to speak to, to God's people in a way that will give glory to God because we don't exalt ourselves but we just present the word, the living word, the rhema word, the, the ruach living word, the spirit of God word so that people can have their lives transformed and come into the kingdom of God. The angel of the Lord was a visible manifestation of God, possibly the presence of Christ, the pre-incarnation that we spoke about. And the flame of fire was the glory of God's Shekinah. Shekinah, which is the glory of his divine presence. And that's everything, anyone and everything that, that came into contact was touched radically. Now we appreciate and acknowledge that the angels of the Lord, in this case, received worship. But we also know that Moses at this burning bush in verses 5 to 7, then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. To know the love of God is something that is uh, a mystery. That's something that he cares so intimately and deeply for us that uh, he even said to Moses, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard the cry because of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrows. Strong's Accordance, Word Wealth, 3045, to know. To know, to perceive, to distinguish, to recognize, to acknowledge, to be acquainted with. In a few instances, to know intimately, that is, sexually. Also, to acknowledge, recognize, esteem, and endorse. When scripture speaks of God's making known his name, it refers to his re revealing, through th deeds or events, what his name truly means. Thus, in chapter 6, verses 3, I appear to Abraham. Isaac and to Jacob as El Shaddai, but my, but my name Yahweh, I was not known to them. God did not mean that the patriarchs had never heard the name Yahweh, but rather that he did not reveal the full meaning of his name Yahweh until the time of Moses and the Exodus. This is a great fascinating opportunity for those patriarchs to come into that relationship, learn about what God was saying through, through Moses. No matter what age you are, even if you're 90 years old, there's an opportunity for you to know the love of, the, uh, love of God. You know, God acknowledged that he had seen and heard the problems of the Hebrews and intended to become personally involved in what was happening in their, in their situation and in their lives. Uh, we spoke a little bit earlier of the land flowing with milk and honey, and poetically uh, this describes its perhaps lushness and fertility. But the Canaanites were the principal inhabitants of the fortified cities. And the religious ceremonies uh, centered in fertility cults, which uh, with worship of many different gods. Now, over the next season, we're going to appreciate the value of worship. But we're going to also appreciate the worship is to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But understanding that uh, this land flowing with milk and honey did still have its challenges and things that needed to be looked at from heaven's perspective from God's perspective takes us back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to 9 uh, sorry yeah 4 to 9 so we continue here are Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength 
and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk with them when you sit in your home, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and that shall be a, a frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So this is uh, an opportunity for us to value the kingdom uh, principles and dynamics. And in this case, it was God saying to them, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and there shall be a frontlets between your eyes, that you shall write them on the doorposts of your house as well on your gates. This uh, creed of Judaism was expressed through these teachings. But let's have a look at what it says about the truth in action that will allow us to appreciate the love of our Father and how we can perhaps maybe cultivate that dynamic relationship with Him. So when we do so, uh, cultivating that, that dynamic relationship with Him, we can appreciate a couple of things. Undivided devotion requires wholehearted commitment to the Lord. God calls His people to pursue Him with all their heart soul and strength in that pursuit we will find life as well as blessing so what do we do in the meantime as we continue pressing in leaning in seek and depend on god's presence this is where you'll find victory and study god's word diligently and apply to what you think or do renewing of the mind and give yourself to prayer and be in his presence very very important prayer and presence go hand in hand now, the Lord translates the Hebrew Yahweh, but later Jews uh, substitute the word Adonai, which uh, is something that we can learn a little later on in our future messages about the different names of God. But Yahweh was considered too sacred to be pronounced, and the word God is used here in its plural form in the Hebrew text. Thus, our God, the Lord, is one, emphasizing the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's three persons in the same substance in the one Godhead. So if we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 5. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Heart, soul, strength. Ask the Lord to teach and guide and lead you into what he's meaning by that. Because there's a three in one that's in the Godhead. And we've got a body, we've got a mind, and we've got a heart and a, and a spirit. Israel's obedience was to arise from a relationship. That relationship would be based on love. And the verse considered by Jesus to be the first and greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your spirit. But the heart was to be the seat of the mind as well as the will. It's all about the heart. Now when Jesus quoted verses 5, he also spoke of this in Mark chapter 12. Let's just go there quickly. I wasn't going to, but let's, let's go to Mark chapter 12 so that we can understand the significance of what was shared. Mark chapter 12, verses 13. Speaking of that greatest commandment, the word wealth mind, when he says, love the, Lord, love, the, love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. A word wealth mind is Strong's Accordance 1271. Literally, a thinking through. Dia noia, which combines nous, mind, and dia, through. The word suggests understanding, insight, meditation, reflection, perception, and the gift of apprehension and the faculty of thought. When this, uh, when this uh, faculty is renewed by the Holy Spirit, the whole mindset changes from the fearful negativ neg negativism of the carnal mind to the vibrant positive thinking of the quickened spiritual mind. And then the other one is taken from uh, Luke, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 verses 27. Mm. That was the parable of the Good Samaritan. When he spoke to the lawyer who stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, teacher, what shall I do to in inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? 
So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered rightly. Do this, and you'll live. But he adds that mind, which is probably emphasizing the understanding of uh, the heart. And if we read verses 8 and 9, speaking of that greatest commandment, it was speaking about the physical uh, things that God was speaking to them. And at some point in the human or Hebrew uh, uh, living standards, they started putting this into practice with uh, leather cubes on straps, which is the flectoris, as well as uh, binding it on their left hand and on their foreheads during morning prayers. This also placed scriptures in a small metal box or glass and fixed them to the right hand doorposts of each home. And that's the literal, literal fulfillment of the command to be a people of the commandments. Now, while they're putting it on their, 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 their left hand and, and their, their head, appreciating that this is now fulfillment of the law, it's also about the heart. It's coming down from the written knowledge into heart. A couple of, several months ago, I spoke about the hardened heart and how the, the Lord God is going to put a new, a new heart in us. And when we appreciate through these teachings, the step-by-step -step, uh, process of, of understanding perhaps maybe the Ten Commandments that were written on tablets, stone, very hard, to how it was transformed into the heart of the message, expanding it through the Deuteronomy wording. Also appreciating that it's not only just us, but it's the future generations that's going to come after us that will guide and lead the future generations after them. So as I've shared yesterday and a few other days, is it's important for us to und understand and appreciate the value and the wisdom of the Lord God Almighty. How do we do that? We do that as, as uh, individuals. We do it as parents. Uh, we do it as grandparents. We do it as children. We do it as uh, teenagers and adults. It's an opportunity for us to take that opportunity and responsibility the value and the kingdom dynamics that are available to us all. Especially the young. There's guidance for the young. The law, which is the Torah, the Jewish name for the Pentateuch, and basically means the teaching. It's just teachings that gives us that, uh, that, that, that word that penetrates into our heart. Because remember, ages 1 to 5, there's a lot that goes on in the mind that has an effect on the body, mind and spirit. Even though afterwards you can still be taught and have it uh, digested into your system like food does. Keeping the good nutrients and getting rid of those that aren't good. But it's the foundation of the righteousness that's available for us all and should be available for everybody. The expression, my law, is assuming it's, uh, it is the parent speaking. But it implies that God's law is the basis for the parent's household principles. It allows uh, him to be seated at the head with the family unit underneath or even just the individual underneath. Though exceptions may exist, it's general principle that wise living avoids many of the eventual eventualities uh, that, that shortens life. And sometimes current and future generations haven't had an opportunity to be able to be presented with the word, the living word, the ruach, Spirit, spiritful living word. It's an opportunity to come into his presence and come into his relationship with him. But it mentions in Proverbs, let's read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1, 1 to 4. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and men. What a profound message that which I would like to repeat. Because this is a guidance for not only the young, but for us old, old and older ones too. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. 
Let not, uh, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God. Number one. And men. Bind them. To write them. Is mercy and truth that uh, is to be considered very constant and valuable. Valuable equipment, valuable resources, valuable tools never to be left behind. It goes on further to say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. This is the intimacy and the spiritual breakthrough, which is faith's warfare and a great kingdom dynamic that we can read. Two words in this passage are especially significant in words, ways and acknowledge. The word ways, which is the Hebrew word for derek, means a road, a course, or a mode of action. It suggests specific opportunities a person may encounter on a recurring basis. The most common segment of opportunity we experience regularly is each new day. As it is, the passage suggests that in all our days we should acknowledge God and in so doing He will direct our paths. Of equal significance is the word acknowledge, which in the Hebrew word is yada, as we've spoken of just a few days ago. Elsewhere, yada is translated to know, meaning to know by observation, investigation, reflection, or even first-hand experience. But the highest level of yada is in direct intimate contact. And this refers to life-giving intimacy as in a marriage. Applied to a spiritual context, it suggests an intimacy with God in prayer that conceives and births blessings and victories. Joined to our uh, 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 Proverbs text, we might conclude that if in all our ways and days we maintain yada, which is direct intimate contact with God, God promises to direct our paths towards fruitful life-begetting endeavors. Hmm. So, as we close off uh, today, I want to just read a word wealth and another passage of scripture so we can just wrap it up and appreciate and give thanks for the importance of this message. Word wealth direct. Yasha. Strong's Accordance 3474. To be straight, right, upright, pleasing and good. Yasha appears in the intensive uh, form here and means to make straight and right. God will straighten out our paths of his devoted, trusting servants. From this verb comes the noun Yosha, which is uprightness, as found in Psalms 119, verses 7. I hope you managed to read Psalms 119. Job is described as a blameless and upright. Uh, he's described as blameless and upright. God's promise to Cyrus was that he that, that the crooked places would be made straight. And finally, from Yasha comes the poetical name Jeshurun, which is upright one. A name always applied to Israel as God's righteous nation. God's righteous nation. There's a, there's a message filled with faith, hope, and love. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 and 26. Well, we'll take it from a little bit earlier. For I will take you from amongst the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this message that uh, hopefully will bring life and a revitalized spirit in you, going deeper, realizing that the words through the book of Deuteronomy has such a profound impact on our lives. 
writing the, the law of, of, of those tablets that were written on stone onto our hearts. As it says in Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 25 to 27, it gives us a great opportunity to know that we belong to you and that we shall be your people and you will be our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, sending you love and we'll chat tomorrow.